Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next week of APH's virtual Excel camp. Today is our first day of mystery camp, and this is built for seven to 10 year olds. We are so glad to have you with us. Hopefully your Wheatley kit did arrive. If not, hold tight. The mail can be a little slow. You can always watch the recording if you like. Again, welcome to the APH Virtual Excel Camp Mystery Camp this week, seven to 10 year olds. There will be a time where you have the ability to turn on your camera and turn on your microphone. Do realize it is captured in our recording and will be posted. So only do that with your parents' permission. And now I am going to introduce you to Kimmy and Laura, who are going to instruct you this week for Mystery Camp. Hi, Kimmy and Laura. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, we are so excited to have you aboard our Mystery Camp this week. Uh, my name is Laura, um, and I, uh, I work at the School for the Deaf and Blind in Arizona. Uh, I work with students who are currently in middle school uh, and I teach science and social studies to them. And so um, I'm very excited to have some younger kids on board and uh, I will pass it over to Miss Kimmy to introduce herself. Hi everybody, my name is Miss Kimmy and I also teach at the Arizona State School for the Deaf and Blind. I teach high school students with visual impairments and multiple disabilities and I teach math and science. All right, um, so what we are going to do is I'm just gonna share my screen with you. And we will jump right into our first day. So um, we do have some quick rules to go over for our summer camp this week. Uh, you probably have already heard of some of these rules, but we're just going to go over them pretty quickly altogether. So one of the first things will be if you are wanting to share and unmute yourself, please just make sure that you have a nice quiet background so that we can clearly hear you. Another thing is that we will be uh, sometimes asking you to raise your digital hand. Miss Kimmy, would you like to explain how to do that? On the bottom deck of your screen, there is a little icon and it's an emoji of a hand and it says raise hand. If you click it, it shows us that you are raising your hand. All right. Also, I think you guys already probably did this, but please join with your name. It's very helpful that we know who all is participating. And so if you join and make sure that your name is the one that's joining, then we know exactly who you are. Another thing is that the, um, the chat will be open when we say so. So there will be times where we will be asking you to write something in the chat or share an idea in there. When we do, then um, you can go ahead and feel free to write in the chat box. But if we are um, not ready for you to write in the chat box, please do not write in there. So that way those people who are using a screen reader are able to focus on what we're saying and then uh, focus on the chat box when the chat box is being used. And Leanne did include some information in the chat. So if you are a window users to raise or lower your hand, you can press Alt Y on your keyboard. Mac users, Option Y to raise or lower your hand. And to open your chat is Alt H for Windows. If you're a Mac user, Command Shift H and that'll open your chat. Perfect, thank you, Miss Kimmy. So the last and final thing will be that we will sometimes be sharing a document camera with you. Uh, Miss Kimmy has a 
uh, document camera or a uh, screen up of her Wheatley board. It's a little black board right now. Um, if you would like to pin that, um, you can pin it and put it at the top of your gallery so that it is uh, easiest to find when we are sharing some of our pictures. Thank you, Ms. Kimmy. All right. So since we are doing a mystery camp, we want to know what does the word mystery mean to you? And so this is gonna, we're gonna go ahead and practice using the chat. If you can go ahead and write in the chat, what do you think the word mystery means? And it looks like I'm already seeing some people writing in the chat box. Mystery means to solve something from Eleanor, Princess Eleanor. I like it. That's a really good guess. Thank you, I see. Says to solve something. Something you need to figure out is what Ranger says. These all look really good. Ooh, wandering. Wandering can definitely be a mystery. Give you another few seconds to go ahead and uh, write in the chat. Nice, I see Shannon said to find something out. Raiden said it could be a surprise. Ooh. Hopefully a good surprise. <laughs> or something we don't know. Ooh. That sometimes something can be unsolved. It's something you need to find out. I think we're all on the same page. This is great. So mystery is the theme for camp this week. If you haven't figured that out by now, by our title, Mystery Camp, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, Miss Kimmy, would you like to go over our theme for us? Sure. So a lot of the options or a lot of the comments we heard in the chat are right on. We are going to be solving some mysteries. We're going to be doing some games and activities that ask you to make guesses or come to conclusions, maybe something you need to solve or figure out, just like someone who's trying to solve a mystery. We're really excited, we can't wait. All right. So uh, we are going to uh, start off with a little joke. Um, you may have already heard this one. And if you have, that's totally fine. You can write your answer in the chat. But our joke is, what do you call an alligator in a vest? What do you call an alligator in a vest? Ooh, we're starting to see some answers there. Hmm. <laughs> Think some people might have heard this joke before, or they're just good mystery solvers. <laughs> we see quite a few. Looks like at least three of you said an investigator. <laughs> Get it? It's a gator in a vest. And so I have a picture here of a blue and yellow alligator wearing a vest and a trench coat, holding up a magnifying glass because they are about to solve a mystery. So we are actually going to uh, solve two quick mysteries about your teachers. So what we're gonna do every day this week is we're going to have a top secret mystery or a top secret case that you guys will try to solve. Miss Kimmy is going to do the first one. All right, this is Miss Kimmy speaking. You all are going to try to guess my hometown. So this is where I grew up. 
I'm going to give you three clues. If you have a guess at any point, you can feel free to enter it into the chat. So you do not need to wait for all three clues before you start guessing. All right. Clue number one, it is a major city in the Midwest. So it's around the middle of the United States. It is known for tall skyscrapers or buildings and an art piece called the bean. Hmm. Maybe you've heard of that before. Nice, Nathan guessed, guessed maybe it's in California. Good guess. And we love deep dish pizza and eating hot dogs at Cubs games. Ooh, I see some answers in the chat. It looks like Princess Sydney and Thomas all had the same guess, which, oh, and Brayden. There you go, you guys are getting it. It is Chicago. Chicago is in Illinois, and that is where I grew up. Some very enthusiastic Chicago's in there, I see. Oh yeah. Maybe you guys are from around there too. Cool. Awesome. Your first mystery has been solved. Congratulations. Yay! Oh, nice. Amanda even noticed that it has a nickname, the Windy City. That is true. It is called the Windy City. All right. Your second mystery of the day is for me, Miss Laura. And for me, you are actually going to try and guess not my hometown, but you're going to try and guess my favorite sport. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing as Miss Kimmy. I'm gonna give you three clues and you guys can try to write it in the chat if you can solve it as we go through. So my very first clue for you is Two teams play on a big outdoor field. Hmm. Two teams play on a big outdoor field. What sports could possibly be played outside on a field? Hmm. Yeah, we got some good guesses already. Nice, all right. The second one, might narrow down your guesses. The second clue is you catch and throw a flat plastic disc and you keep it away from the other team. Hmm. Starting to see some great answers in that chat. I, ooh, rugby and cricket. I wish I played cricket. <laughs> The last one is you score by catching the Frisbee in an end zone. And I see quite a few of you actually wrote that word Frisbee. There's a word that goes before it. I don't know if any of you maybe know it. Hmm. Thomas, looks like you got it. It is ultimate Frisbee. That is my favorite sport. So I have a picture here of myself actually playing. I'm holding a white frisbee in my right hand. I'm wearing a blue or a uh, red and black jersey. Um, and a uh, woman wearing a blue jersey is guarding me. So that is my favorite sport. Now you know a little bit about your instructors. You've solved two mysteries. Good job, everyone. All right, Miss Kimmy, can you go over the, uh, or what you're gonna do, or sorry. I'll go ahead and introduce and then I'll have you show your document camera. Sure. All right. We are going to play a game to kind of get oriented with our Wheatley kit. Now, I know that some of you might not have the Wheatley kit and that's okay. If you don't have it yet, what you can do is you can try to maybe draw some of these things that we're talking about. Um, you can imagine them in your mind. Um, if you have your uh, carousel of textures, which was maybe another uh, kit that was sent to you, 
Uh, you might find some of the different fabrics in there that uh, have different textures in it that might be useful uh, once you do get your Wheatley kit. So um, what we're going to do is play a little bit of I Spy. I'm going to name something from your Wheatley kit and you are going to try and find it and um, let us know when you do. So if you would like to uh, share it with, uh, with us and show us on your camera, I believe we will allow you guys to uh, use your camera and your microphone now. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. You can just write in the chat, found it. So how this is going to work is I'm actually going to not screen share anymore. And that way it is easier for you to see Miss Kimmy's document camera. If you want to go ahead and put that or pin I just that. realized it's probably upside down, huh? Oh, there you go. There you go. There we go. Sorry about that. All good. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is look through our Wheatley kit. You might have, if you've already kind of played with it a little bit, you may have already taken out some of the pieces of your kit. If you haven't, then you might find them in some of these plastic bags. And so um, you may need to be kind of going through some plastic bags right now to find some of these items. Yes, I see that a couple people have raised their hand. Looks like uh, Nathan raised their hand. Okay, perfect. Um, Nathan, I'm going to allow you to talk. Do you have a question? Amanda is asking, do you know how long? Till she we gets hers? are checking on that. They did ship out. If you received the first kit, which actually was an accident, <laughs> that means we have your correct address and it shouldn't be long. Some people were already telling me they had received it yesterday and today. Perfect. All right. So the first piece that we are looking for um, is your black folding board. Hopefully that should be one of the easier ones to find if you have your Wheatley kit. Yes, it looks like uh, Nathan, you have a question for us. He has lowered his hand. It looks like it was answered. Oh, okay, got it. Perfect. Sweet. Nice. We see All you. All right. Yes, you can totally open the box if you have it. If you do, if you received your weekly kit, please open it because we're going to be using it quite a bit if you have it. So Miss um, Kimmy has shared her uh, black board with you. It has kind of felt on the inside of it. It's nice and soft easy for things to uh, stick to. And the first smaller object you're going to look for is a red fuzzy triangle. So I spy a red fuzzy triangle. Hmm. It's not on your board. It might be in one of your bags. Looks like Miss Kimmy has found it. She's put it in the center of her board. Great. Sounds like a lot of our friends have found it. Awesome. Leanne is asking if we want them to have their cameras on. Sure. I think that would be great. We'd love to see you guys if you Yes, that way we can see too if they have the right pieces. Okay, so if you have permission to have your camera on, you may raise your digital hand and I will promote you to panelist, which means you can have a mic and a camera. Realize that you want your mic off 
unless you have been asked to speak. So remember, if you would like your camera on, raise your digital hand and Miss Leanne will uh, allow you to put your camera on. There we go. We're starting to see a couple of you. That takes a second. Awesome. Well, while we are waiting for that, if you found your red fuzzy triangle, very nice job. Give yourself a high five. There we go. And we can go ahead and go on to our second eye or our third I spy object. I spy no. an open circle. No, come around. What I mean by an open circle is it kind of feels like a circle with a hole in the middle of it, kind of like a donut. Hmm, probably won't taste like one though. Please don't try to eat it. <laughs> but if it does work well as a nice little nose hat. <laughs> I was able to get it to balance on my nose yesterday when we were practicing. Miss Kimmy, you look so <laughs> Put her circle right on her nose. <laughs> if you do have that uh, open circle, you'll notice it also has some texture to it, has like some small lines or bumps, and it is purple in color. So we found our black board. We found our red fuzzy triangle. We found our open circle. Hello. Yeah. Hello. On to our next one. I see a lot of people are finding these things. Nice. It looks like Kira even said it's like a ring. I wasn't even thinking of that. Oh, yeah. Apparently, apparently I'm hungry and I want a donut instead. <laughs> All right. On to the next one. So I spy a right angle piece. Now, if you don't know what a right angle is, that is totally fine. I'll give you another hint. It is shaped a little bit like the letter of my first name, Laura. Hmm. Looks like Miss Kimmy found it. Maeve, it looks like your hand is raised. Um, is it L in print or brown? That is such a fantastic question. It is an L in print. Thank you for asking. Which is like the letter V in Braille. Correct. Very good, yeah. And if you rotate it a little bit, it even looks like a V in print as well. Nice. Or it could look like a mountain. That's a good one. Nice. So we have found four objects in our kit so far. We will be using a lot of these throughout the week. And so part of the reason why we're going over this is just so you know what certain things are called. So if we go to try to use a right angle piece or an L, now you know what it feels like. All right, our next I spy clue is going to be a long, thin, smooth yellow line, a long, thin, smooth yellow line. Now there are quite a few lines within our kit. Some are very short, some are about medium sized and some Hello. are long. Hello. Yes. I see some of our friends have found the thick yellow line. There is also a thin one. See if you can find two different lines that are different thicknesses. So not necessarily how long it is. Both of these lines that I have on my board are almost the whole board. Not quite, but one is about the width of my finger and the thin one is even less than that. Yeah, I see Kaylee has both of them. Awesome. Yep. I have both of them. Thomas does too, yeah. Yep, and so does Princess Eleanor. I have them too. Nathan has them. 
Both, good. There we go, Brayden. Yes. Emmanuel, do you have a question? Yeah, I can't really find any of the things. You're having a hard time finding the pieces. No problem. So what you might find is they might be in some of those plastic Ziploc bags. And if they are, that's totally fine. It might help keep your things a little organized if you'd like. If you would like to take them out, um, you can take them out and they do stick to your board. So you can lay them out on your board, like on Miss Kimmy. It depends on it. I mean, we're going to leave that open to you on how you want to organize your stuff. If you feel like you want to have it all out on the board, you can do that. If you want to keep them in the bags, you can do that too. Throughout the camp, this is Miss Kimmy speaking, we will be using one side of your board for making pictures and demonstrations. So you will want to leave one side open. You'll see that I have one side where I'm showing our shapes. And the other side, mine's not organized very well. <laughs> I have them all just stuck on there. However, our, I want it in the moment. I probably will organize them a little bit more tonight. You could also put them, Miss El, Miss Laura's is much more organized than mine. Oh yeah, wow, Nathan, you guys got all of them on there. You could also put them in a bucket or a dish or maybe on a, a plate or like a Tupperware. Yes, the uh, Dash, thank you for the question. There is, um, they are Velcro pieces. And so they will stick to your blackboard. Now, the only thing, and we'll get to this one at the very end, there is a bag within your kit that has pieces that are not Velcroed. So we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, going back to our I spy, we have a few more things to, or two more things to find. So I spy a red arc. A red arc. Now, what I mean by an arc is it's going to be kind of a curved line. And it's going to maybe resemble a hill. Ooh, I see. Ranger, you found it. Ooh. Nice. I see Thomas and Ira found it. Or we can, maybe it's like a smile. Ooh, that's a good one. A very <laughs> small smile. <laughs> Awesome. All right. I think I have found everything. Perfect. Great job. Everything that I found. Nicely done. Ooh, Princess Eleanor, you said it's like macaroni. I didn't even think about that one. And mm. I am so food driven, I should have thought of that one. I know. I love macaroni. I can't believe I didn't think of that. It does look like elbow mac. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Um, what are you going to do with the book? Uh, the book just kind of lays out all the different um, elements of your Wheatley kit. We, Miss Kimmy and myself, are not going to do anything with it this week. But if you would like to explore it later, I know there are some cool figures that are in there that you could try to make. Um, and it talks a little bit about um, how you can use the Wheatley board for different things. Oh. All right, and our final one. Our final one is uh, a container of bumpy jewels. A container of bumpy jewels. Now this one was in a different bag altogether. Mm -hmm. Thomas in found bag, it. It's in a bag within a bag. And you do not need to open that container. And the reason why is because this particular bag doesn't have Velcro on the back of the uh, objects. And so if you would like to be able to use your little bumpy jewels, you are totally welcome to do that. But what we would ask is that you uh, maybe work with someone to take the uh, sticky Velcro sheet that is in that bag to stick them on your jewels and then cut them out. 
We won't be doing that today in our camp, but if that's something you would like to do on your own time, you are more than welcome to do that. They just won't stick to your board. So I don't want you to lose those precious jewels. Excuse me, what are we finding again? You're gonna find a container of bumpy jewels. It's a little plastic container and there are some different- um, Is this it? Rubies in it. That is, that it looks, looks like, like it came from the carousel kit actually. Emmanuel, did you receive a second kit? Yeah, I received two boxes. It's the second box you received. Mm. He did have the, the Wheatley Velcro board. So it's where that Wheatley Velcro board came out of. Awesome. Well, everyone, great job on iSpy. If you have your Wheatley- Wait, I think I found it. Awesome. Thank you. It? Yep, you got it. All right, great job with iSpy. We just wanted to get you familiar with some of those different objects and how you can use them. Um, and so we are going to jump right back into our presentation. Oopsies. Go through iSpy. Everyone did a Fabulous job with that. Uh, Miss Kimmy, can you go over what exactly we're gonna learn today in camp? Yes, so this is Miss Kimmy speaking. And what we just did was become familiar with our Wheatley kits. We explored some of the pieces that are in there. And we are also going to create 2D pictures that represent 3D objects. Hmm, oh. Kimmy, what does 2D and 3D mean? Maybe some of our friends can either type in the chat if you'd like, or you can raise your hand if you want to give us a verbal answer of what you think 2D and 3D mean. Hmm. Or two-dimensional yeah. and three-dimensional. Claire, Clara and Dash in the attendees side have raised their hand. Awesome. So I will allow both of you to talk. And if you really actually wanted your camera on, just let me know. Dash, go ahead. So um, 3D... A 3D, so 2Ds are like only like paper, like paper, but 3D are like, are like they have length, width, and height. They, they, but papers like flat, only papers only have like length and width. Wow, great explanation. We had um, a few people writing in the chat that said something similar, right? that uh, 2D represents two-dimensional, that they are flat shapes, kind of like how Dash was saying, kind of like paper. Ranger said, uh, another way to think about it is 3D means raised shapes, like a cube. Very nice job. Um, we heard that 2D means you have a length and a width, and 3D means that you include a height and you might find a volume. We're getting some really big math words here. I like yeah. it. <laughs> wow. All yep. right. So what we'll be doing based off of what Miss Kimmy said is we're gonna be creating some different pictures with our 2D objects. So something that you wanna think about is the objects that we were just finding in our iSpy kit or in our, uh, when we were playing I Spy. Um, these, I guess you could say are technically three-dimensional because they do have, um, they are raised up a little bit, but these are good um, flat shapes that will represent 3D objects in the real world. And so we're going to say that our little tactile objects are our 2D or two-dimensional 
representations of things that would be three-dimensional and have like a height or a width and a length along with it in the real world. I see a few people have their hands raised. Um, Narjus, is that how I say that? Looks like you guys are trying to unmute, I see. Hi there, did you guys have a question? Okay. Say my name is Nargis. My name is Nargis. I just don't have anything to say now, but I wanted to describe how to say, uh, what's the difference of 2D and 3D? Great, you wanna go ahead and share really quickly? Yeah, but like it already was shared. So. Oh, gotcha. Well, thank you. I appreciate you raising your hand to share and very nice it's to meet you. Awesome. Nathan, were you wanting to share the same thing or did you have a question? I have a question. Go ahead, Nathan. Um, you can ask. Um, I was wondering, do we have to like put our triangle lines, circles, and our like, do we have to like put our stuff away or are we still using this? We're still gonna use it. Great question. If you want, you. if you want, you can leave one side of your board blank. So that way that can be your surface that you're gonna make something on. And on your other side, you can have all of your uh, shapes. So Miss Kimmy is on her, on her document camera. She's moving all of those shapes that we just found off to the other side. So she has a nice blank space to work in. Brianna, what is your question? I forgot it. No problem. Raise your hand if you think of it again. So what we're gonna do really quickly since we've been working so hard for the last few minutes is we're gonna take a quick movement break, get us out of our seats, get us moving, and then we will jump right back into our um, right back into our activity. So I have a little spin the wheel here. Excuse me. Yes. Um. Did you say we're gonna put all all of the shapes on one side of the board and leave the other side of the board blank? You got it. That is correct. Awesome. So I'm gonna spin the wheel and whatever we land on. We're gonna go ahead and get up out of our seats and do it. So here the spin of the wheel goes. Ooh, can't wait. Slowing down. Ooh. We're gonna touch our toes. So I'm gonna get out of my seat. I'm gonna stand up. And I hope all of you guys are following. We're gonna stretch up to the sky. Big, big stretch. And we're gonna bend over and try to touch our toes, keep our balance. And you're going to do it three more times. You're going to reach up to the sky. Oh, big stretch. Inhale and exhale. And you're going to reach down to the ground. Touch those toes if you can. Give them a little tickle. Stand up all the way straight. Big breath in. And big breath out. Touch those toes again. One final one, big breath in, touch the sky, reach up as high as you can. And exhale, breathe out, touch those toes. And slowly come back up and back to your seat. All right. Good stretch, thanks everyone. Right back to business. We, are going to play a little game where we are going to do mystery pictures. So like Miss Kimmy was saying, we are going to be using our 2D shapes to represent 3D objects. So what is gonna happen here is we're going to give you a list of things to do with those shapes if you have them in your Wheatley kit. If you don't, you can choose to draw it on another, piece of paper. You can try to make them out of things that you have nearby. Um, or if you have that carousel of textures, you may be able to uh, 
very quickly cut things out, but probably not in the amount of time that we have today. So we're gonna give you clues. And then you guys are going to try and make whatever it is that we're giving you clues about. And we're going to try and guess what we're building. Before we start, Nathan, I see your hand is up. Nathan just wanted to say something. Um, by the way, uh, when we did that, that did help me stretch. Because when you're sitting in a seat for like five hours, it makes you feel uncomfortable when you get up. You are totally right. I hear you. I don't thank like sitting for very long. So thank you for sharing that. Brianna, did you remember your question? Yes. Are we using, uh, are we taking out these from the box? Good question. Uh, Brianna's holding up her uh, box of jewels. You can maybe try to use them, but my only concern is that they don't have Velcro on the back yet. Mm -hmm. And so I personally won't be using them because I know that I will probably lose them. Um, but if you want to use them later, there is a strip of Velcro that is also in that bag and you can uh, stick those onto the back of it and make them Velcro jewels, okay? There's also some googly eyes in there too. Those are always fun. <laughs> All right, if you would, um, Miss Kimmy, I think we're going to turn off your document camera for this one because we're gonna be guessing our pictures as we go. I am just going to close. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Are we ready for mystery picture number one? All right. Miss Kimmy, would you like to do the yeah. honor? Sure. All right. For mystery picture number one, you are going to find three straight long lines. So remember, those are those long, skinny ones like a straw. Once you find them, you're going to cre connect them to create a large triangle. So on that open space of your board, That's put those funny. three lines together to um, make a big triangle. Excuse me. Yes. I can't find the three lines you're talking about. I think those were in one of the, there were two bags. I think bag A had the lines. I believe so. And they actually, when they come in your kit, they're all stuck together. You have to tear them apart. So it might feel like a big rectangle. And then you can break the little lines, the smaller lines apart. If you can't find it, it's okay. You can also try to uh, find it and get these things organized after camp today too. So yeah, so we're gonna put said, those lines together mm -hmm. to make a big triangle. Good, all right. Now find two circles. Found them. Good, remember we had two different types of circles. Actually, we have I think solid we ones. One. Oh, we do have three. There's tiny, right. tiny fuzzy pink ones. So you're gonna pick two circles and place them inside the triangle. Anywhere you want inside that triangle. Now remember, this is gonna be creating some kind of a picture. So as we're going, you might start to think, hmm, what does this remind me of? Hmm. All right. Last, we're gonna find three arcs. Um, excuse me. Yes, sir. I already, I already found the lines you were talking about. Okay, then you can put them together to make a big triangle. 
Making the triangle now. All right. Once you have two circles inside, you're going to find the arcs, which we said were like little hills or smiles or macaroni. Mm -hmm. And you're going to put those inside the triangle anywhere you want. Inside the triangle. Hmm, I'm seeing some really hard workers right now. People trying to figure out what could yeah, this guess. possibly be. All right. Yeah, Feel free. Ooh, I see Thomas wrote in the chat, pizza? Hmm. Feel free to type in the chat that. if you have a guess of what it could be. We have some friends that raised their hands. Nargis, did you want to give us a guess? You can unmute. Nargis, I have a question. Are the are the pieces are the are the pieces allowed to connect? The small pieces inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can connect. They're allowed to touch for sure. They don't have to though. I see that Nathan, they made a face inside their circle. Oh. How if anyone right. wants to show us their, see, hold up your image for us. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, very cool. So Wait if you stop Nathan. sharing your slide, I can then pin all of those people's pictures and they can oh, see them. Yeah. Oh. So leave them up. I'm going to go find you and I'm going to add your spotlight. These are very cool. I'm seeing some people uh, used different circles within their uh, triangle. Uh, some people made um, what looks like smiley faces inside their triangle. Excuse me. Yes. Um, what do you do after you make the square, the triangle? You find um, some circles, two circles, and you place them inside the triangle. And then I you find found two already. I placed place them inside. Then you're going to also find three arcs and place those inside as well. What are the arcs you're talking about? They're like the little hills or uh, pieces of macaroni. Um, they look like tiny smiley faces, or not smiley faces, tiny smiles. They are all of these look beautiful. Yeah, you guys really got creative. Made some little faces mm -hmm. inside of your triangle. Some people spread the pieces out randomly. We did have some good guesses in the chat as well. Some people guessed pizza. Some people said a face, a two-eyed monster, a slice of Swiss cheese. <laughs> and it was, drum roll, a piece of pizza. That was our intent at least, but you guys made some awesome things. So good job if you guessed a piece of pizza. If you guessed, a, I think I can totally see the Swiss cheese now. For sure. And if you made a face, that's pretty cool too. Awesome. All right, this next round, uh, Nargis, I believe you have your hand raised. That was an accident. Oh, no problem. Maeve, what's your question? I have, mine is a machine. Oh, awesome. Worker arms. Explain what you're pointing to. 
like these tiny things. The shape of them and the texture. The smiley face ones that are a bit bumpy are the things, the things that it uses. On the corner of each what? On the corner of each point of, the triangle. Point of my triangle. Very cool. And then the circles are my buttons. Oh, that's so cool. That is very creative. I love that. Thank you for sharing with us. And you have one hand in participants. Alexa? Yes, Alexa. Try holding down the space bar. Do you, you want to say anything? No. No? Okay, we're just going to be muted. Again. Okay. Well, Thank thanks, you. Alexa. All right. Nathan, really, uh, did you have a question? Um, I was just wondering I, what I was trying to make. If any of you here have watched Gravity Falls, I'm not sure if any of you have, but I was trying to make the triangle if any of you have watched it. Nice. If anyone has watched Gravity Falls, then you might know it. <laughs> awesome. All right, last one, Princess Eleanor. It looks like a, a pizza that has a, like a smiley face on it. <laughs> a smiley pizza. <laughs> What a happy piece of pizza. I like that. Thank That's you. A much better way to think about it, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, looking at the amount of time, we do have a second mystery picture, but I don't think we're going to be able to get to it today. Um, what you can do, though, is you are going to actually be creating a mystery picture for us tomorrow. So let me kind of skip through here. Um, and go through what we kind of did today and we'll give you some instructions on your extension activity tonight. So today you guys were able to become a little more familiar with your Wheatley kits. We got to practice using some of our different objects in it. And you guys just used 2D pictures, two dimensional pictures uh, to represent three-dimensional objects, which was great. Miss Kimmy, can you help describe what our extension activity is for tonight? Sure. This is Miss Kimmy speaking. Your extension activity for tonight is to create a self-portrait or a picture of something you enjoy. So you can use the Wheatley kit. You can use the jewels and the googly eyes um, once you put Velcro on them. You can use the, the first kit that got delivered, the carousel of different textures and paste papers. Or you can even find things around your house if you wanna put Velcro on those and use those to put in your picture. But you're going to create a mystery picture, just like we did today, of yourself or something you enjoy. And if for some reason you don't have that Wheatley kit yet, don't worry, it should be coming soon. And you can still participate, like Miss Kimmy said. She said you can use that carousel of textures, right? That first kit, you can use a lot of things in there. Or if you want to draw a picture, or if you want to use objects around your house to put in a self-portrait of yourself, you can do that. Now, how we would, um, we would love if you send those to us because we'll share some of them tomorrow at the beginning of class. So there will be instructions on the extension activity on how to send those pictures to Miss Kimmy and myself, Miss Laura. The other thing that we have is, if you remember at the beginning of class, we did a top secret case. 
where we tried to figure out what Miss Kimmy's hometown was. Now, it's your turn to be the person who is the top secret uh, mystery person. And you can write us three clues about where you're from. And if we uh, get your information, we will try to choose someone to be the top secret person tomorrow. So just like with the extension activity, you can do both of those tonight, take pictures, email them to us, and we'll try to include it in tomorrow's class. Are there any questions for us? Have have one I got a question. Is it going to be states or cities since a lot of people don't live in major cities? Very good question. Um, I'm fine with either, yep. especially since um, we come from all across the United States, it seems like. Uh, so if you want to do the state that you're from, that's totally fine. Um, if you have a, um, if you want to include the city, that's fine too. I totally understand because I'm from a small town. Brianna and then Nathan. Um, I was wondering if the things I don't have bear velcro, are we using this to cut and to cut the bear velcro and to put it on it, or is there something else that we put it on? Yes, Brianna's holding up that uh, long rectangle of velcro. That's exactly what you can use. Um, now, I haven't done it before, but my recommendation would be to um, peel back some of it, stick down your jewels, and then cut out once you have them stuck down. Mm that would probably be what I would do. Actually, this is Leanne. I'm going to oh, give yeah. you one tip about Velcro sheets that is extremely sticky. Yes. It is actually easier to cut the sticky Velcro with its back still on. Otherwise, you often end up with scissors that are covered in sticky. Thank you, Miss Leanne. That is a good Thanks. tip. Uh, Nathan, what was your question? So I actually have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so all the stuff that you just said about what we have to do when we're off the call, would you like write it on something or like an email if anyone forgot? Yes, the um, extension activity is all listed within, I believe the uh, Google folder or- Don't worry, this is Leanne. This is something that will be sent to your email right after we end here today and every other afternoon. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I just wanted to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for and everything today, actually. You are very welcome. We are so excited to see you all tomorrow. Yes, uh, thank you. I have a question real quick. Yes. I have a question real quick. Yes. So, uh, so the box that we got earlier, like uh, the other box, the one that, that has all the different kinds of paper, are we like going to be using any of it? Like later on the week or none of it? Good question. Um, Miss Kimmy and I have not planned anything to use with it, but if you would like to use it, you are more than welcome to. We are not um, going to be using it for our particular camp. So it's like a free gift to you guys. It sure is. We had a mix up in shipping. Um, excuse me. Yes. One more question and then we gotta go. We do. Um, are you gonna use these for anything? I believe that comes from the carousel kit. Um, and so the first box, which has the carousel kit, Miss Kimmy and I have not you or are not planning to use that for our class, but you can use it outside of camp. Okay. Okay. All right, hey, Miss um, Leanne, I'll pass it over to you. I am so happy you. Hold on, I am so happy you have all joined us today. We will have to practice a little bit of muting tomorrow, but I hope you had fun. I look forward to seeing your creations and hearing your mystery clues so we can guess. Have a great day. 
thank you to our closed captioner for providing captions. And thank you, Kimmy and Laura, for a wonderful session of camp. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.